Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to SRPC. Thanks so much for being a part of our church worship celebration this Memorial Day weekend. We are glad to have you. And a special welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us online. Thanks for being with us today as well. Hey, if you're new here, whether online or in person, we just want to say thank you for carving out the time, for making uh, time to come and, and to be with us to worship God. We're continuing our series that we began several weeks ago called Invitations. And in light of all that's happened this week, we're going to be talking today about the invitation to weep. It's a, it's a significant invitation that God offers to us. And we want to walk into that in light of all that's gone on and, and how we may be processing that in our lives today. And so we're going to anticipate what God's word has to say to us because we're anchoring there. Uh, but we want to remind ourselves right from the beginning that God has, has broken through and done everything to make himself available to us, even in and especially in times like this. We truly do worship a God who has done and will continue to do great things in the midst of all the tragic things around us. So would you stand with me? And at home, we invite you to do that as well. I'm going to pray and turn it over to our worship team. who are going to lead us in the worship song, Great Things. Let me pray for us. God, we thank you for uh, the gift of this time together. And we thank you for the gift of your love to us in Jesus Christ. Thank you for the great things that he has done for us. We pray that we would hold fast and strong to those. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship.
to welcome uh, Sawyers here today. So wonderful to have them in our midst. And we have uh, Bass K to sing with us and to read us our scripture this morning. So Kay, go ahead. Okay, our reading this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we may comfort those in any trouble with the comfort that we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. fly 
Lord Jesus, we thank you that we are not worshiping a memory or just a time in history, God, but we are worshiping you, a living Savior. God, we thank you again. We remember to, together again that you are alive and that you are here when we need you. And Lord, at times when we have troubles in this world, God, we believe you are still here as the refuge and strength. God, we think of Psalm 147 that says, you are the binder of the brokenhearted, that you heal their wounds. So Lord, we just come to you today and we call upon you as that Savior, the one who had the power to break through and be resurrected is the same God who hears us when we call and has the power to change lives, to transform lives. And God, you can be the lifter of our heads. May we leave here today with heads lifted high because of who you are. We just pray this now in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please go ahead and have a seat. This is the time of year to celebrate and recognize milestones. Uh, Julie Keene is the director of our student ministry here at SRPC. I'd like to invite Julie up along with our graduating seniors from high school. Julie and seniors, welcome. Looking forward to hearing from you. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, we want to come on over, don't be shy. Um, we wanted to um, just celebrate our seniors. Uh, Hannah had graduation on Friday, and I think everybody else has it this coming Friday. Is that right, guys? Um, and so we're in a, a season just of celebration. It's a time of remembering and also just being really excited for the future that God has for each one of these students. Um, and I can honestly say each one of them has been a tremendous gift. And um, so we just want to lift them up before the Lord and uh, give them a chance to sort of share um, what they're up to next. So... Go ahead and s just share your name, um, where you're graduating from, what your plans are coming up, and um, if there's anything else you'd like to add. Awesome. Um, my name is Tessa Lee Baker. I'm graduating from San Ramon Valley High School, and I'll be attending Biola University to study. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell some fans of, of Biola. Um, <laughs> And I'll be studying political science and secondary education. And um, I just want to mention God has totally been in this journey for me. Um, earlier this year, I wasn't even sure if I would be able to go to college because of um, the cost. And God has opened up so many doors and just blown me away and um, made this possible. And um, it's really been a season of recognizing his provision and his blessings in my life. That's awesome. Hi, um, my name is Hannah Frazee. Um, I graduated on Friday from Castor Valley High School. I know, so exciting. Um, and I am also going to Biola University in the fall. Um, we've got kind of a gang going with Noah too, so um, SAPC, a new branch, is opening in La Mirada. <laughs> But um, yeah, I'm so excited. I'm going to study nursing, and then Tessa and I are also part of the Honors College, which we're both super excited for. Um, and I just want to say thank you guys so much for just like your prayers and how much um, you guys have supported us through this like whole process. And we are so, so excited to see what's next. Uh, my name is John Roderick. I will be graduating from Monta Vista High School and um, I will be attending Cal Poly San Luis Obispo in the fall. Um, I'd like to thank the congregation for always supporting our youth group and being behind us. It really makes like both a spiritual, spiritual and a tangible difference um, in our lives, and I'm just really grateful for the support. Hi, my name is Abigail Lau. Um, I will be graduating from Doherty Valley um, this Friday. Um, I'll be going to Harvard University to study biology. Um, um, and I just wanted to say thank you to this whole congregation just for um, supporting me and blessing me and raising me um, from when I was little. Um, it was this church that brought me to God in the first place. And, um, I'll be carrying your blessings with me throughout college and throughout my life. So thank you. Thank you. 
And then um, Madeline Goldsmith couldn't be here this morning, but um, I'm sure she'd be okay with me sharing that she's going to go to Brown University. She's graduating from Cal High, and she's studying biomedical engineering, right? Yeah, I have to just think of big words and string them together. Um, so clearly we're, we're very proud. I know this whole congregation is very proud of these students, and um, we're just really excited not only for all that you guys are capable of and how much you've achieved, but just the fact that you have God in your hearts. Um, and that you have his spirit living inside you and that his kingdom has come into your lives um, and you get to live in that goodness and in that blessing. And we know that you take that with you, that there are little lights going to each of these colleges because you are going there. Um, so let me just pray for our seniors. And if you just want to extend a hand towards them in blessing, um, we'll just lift them up before the Lord. God, we're just very aware that everything we have comes from you. And Lord, we want it all to go towards you too. That Lord, through our lives, you would be glorified and lifted higher, made more known on this earth that is all yours. And Lord, I just thank you for each one of these students. I thank you for the gift that they are. I thank you for their journeys of faith, Lord, and how you have intersected their paths and revealed yourself to each one of them. Lord, I thank you for their response to you, for their desire to live for you, and what it looks like to just walk with you, Jesus, holding your hand, knowing that our Father in heaven holds everything in the future, and we can just seek first your kingdom and rest, Lord. Rest in your goodness, rest in your faithfulness, rest in all that you have done, that you are doing, and that you will do. And so, Lord, we just praise you for each one of their lives. Thank you, Lord, for all of the gifts and abilities that you have given them and just the amazing plan that you have for their future. Lord, would they just feel your presence and in this time of remembering and a time of great hope, Lord, that they would feel um, you with them because you will never leave them or forsake them, Lord. And we just thank you so much for your faithfulness. And Lord, we just pray for all of the other seniors too, Lord, that you would come alongside them, continue to reveal yourself to them, Lord, that they would see your light and know um, that they are so loved and valued by you. God, we thank you that you, um, you always run after us, you always run to us, and you always walk beside us, Lord, and, and we just thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. And God, would you just get all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, thank you, Julie. Well, congratulations to you guys and to any others who are out there who may be watching, we're just so grateful for that. And uh, thank you for being part of our family here at SRPC. I know sometimes it's mostly in the youth room, but you are part of who we are. And I hope as you go on, you'll know that you have a family here that this family continues to be your family. We hope we'll get to continue to dialogue with you, see you here, and become a part of your journey. So thank you so much, Julie, too. Well, um, we have a couple of special people that I want to bring on up here, and that is Zeus and Charlotte Ebio. And uh, Zeus, if you can just grab this microphone. And I know many of you know them, but if you haven't met them before, Zeus and Charlotte were, have been a part of this church for many years, but five years ago, they felt, hard to believe it's been five years, they felt the calling to go into full-time missions, and God had led them to purchase a 100-foot sea vessel, and, uh, and they took it down to Mexico, uh, and they're based in Mazatlan there with Youth with a Mission, YWAM. And uh, they have been getting that vessel ready, but in the meantime, God's been doing various things through their ministry. YWAM is an international organization, one of the largest sending organizations in the world. And the base that they're at in Mazatlan has become one of the fastest growing bases. They're sending out about 100 people every quarter, I think, mm -hmm. or so, uh, to go out into the mission field, young people. And these guys are kind of in that hub. And their boat is becoming kind of a key figure in that. So anyway, we're just so glad you guys are here and wanted to just get an update. You are uh, some of about a dozen mission partners that we support through this church. And uh, Zeus, maybe we could start with you. Just what's been going on yeah, lately? I mean, the first thing of all, um, it's so great to be able to have um, you guys go in this whole past five years and, and supporting us. And, um, and this uh, journey has been reminding me of um, Pastor Mark's um, sermon in uh, Invitation to Wait in the beginning of May. 
And in that sermon, it says, um, waiting is not doing nothing. And in that, you grow a deeper relationship on God and relying on him. And boy, um, becoming a full-time missionary from going from software engineering to ships is not easy. Mm. And I tell you, uh, the, the dependence on God and seeing his provisions through finances, uh, talent, and volunteers that come alongside, um, we were really grateful. And, and the last thing out of that sermon that he had was um, the, the relinquishing control and how God has showed me to rely on him instead of me being in control. And I had to rely on the shipyard and YWAM, and it's just amazing. Yeah, wow. Well, there you go, Mark. It's <laughs> spreading out, even for people who aren't here. Um, yeah, what a great lesson for all of us. Zeus, I know many of us here have been on the journey with the boat. Yes. If you can let us know a little <laughs> bit about what's happening with the ship. And, and uh, since uh, for the last, uh, just last year, Charlotte and I have been working on our uh, rating, ship rating, and she actually passed and got our captain's license. And uh, yeah, and, and there's a picture of her on there. Um, there she is. <laughs> we did That's a great. sea trials last um, October, and, and, uh, and in the next uh, few months, we get some sea days done, and, and she'll be able to captain the ship and uh, take us around Sea of Cortez. That is awesome. And then I'll, I'll, I'm also working my engineering. That is yeah. great. Well, I know that, as you just mentioned, there's Zeus, that waiting doesn't mean doing nothing. And so, Charlotte, maybe you can share a little bit about what's been happening in the midst of this right. waiting. Oh, I forgot one thing. Yes. I just wanted to show you guys how much young people help. We had to load 22,000 pounds of lead onto the ship. If you could play that cl quick clip. These guys are uh, uh, loading, you can see the lead ballast, and we're, we're going to, and this allows us to pass certificate of inspection. So we're going from a recreational vessel to a commercial vessel. Wow. Thanks, Zeus. What an image. Charlotte? So, yeah, it's pretty cool what we get to do. We bring medical supplies here from the States, and we take it to Mazatlan, and we partner with the local churches there, getting it into hospitals and Red Crosses because they don't have medical supplies. We also do these little kits that we do health education programs through the churches and their home health kits, and they get to learn basic wound care and hand washing and dental hygiene. So uh, also a, a sweet um, thing happened just the week after Easter. We took the youth group from a little uh, church that is a 10-minute boat ride away from Mazatlan. It's called Calvary Isla Piedra. And we took their youth group out, and the, the pastor Efrain and his new wife, Amanda, we sailed out. And as we sailed out of the harbor, I said, you know, it was just after Resurrection Sunday that the disciples went out sailing just like you're doing today. And I shared with them how the Israelites were like them. They fished with nets like their parents and went out on little boats in little villages. And they were just, you know, so excited. And as we sailed back in, Amanda asked them, what, was, what did you learn today and what was the most exciting part? And Daniela says, I am just like the people in the Bible. Uh, Chico says, I've never seen a manta ray jump out of the ocean before. And Mar says, this was the best day of my life. And um, our hearts were so full as they cheered. And still the communities there are still talking about it and can't wait to um, send more of their kids out on the boats with us. That's so awesome. Well, I know... I know God is impacting through you guys even now, and you were telling me earlier you have a church you're working with down there where they're seeing, they've seen like 50 people come to know Jesus in recent months, about one a week. Um, so there's just all sorts of happening now, but also potential, and we want to continue to be a part of that. Now, one thing you didn't share is that there's something that happens, I don't know if it's in your marriage and relationship, when you become a captain, what does that require of Zeus? <laughs> so I actually had to sign papers because I'm getting a merchant mariner credential for engineering. And in these papers, I have to obey my captain. <laughs> I have to sign and notarize. <laughs> oh, 
Well, that should be interesting. Well, hey, um, we want to pray for you guys, um, but also want to say these are obviously just brief uh, reminders of what God's doing in their lives, and we hope that after the service, you'll take time to hang out, ask them more questions, and if you'd like to just go and have lunch with them, they're going to go over to Dos Coyotes, which is just over here, and have some lunch. If you want to just hang out with them and learn some more about their ministry, please do that. Let me pray with you guys. want to remind you, um, as we go into prayer, this is our offering time, and so thank you again to all those who give and support Um, it's huge. We are getting towards the end of our fiscal year here, which ends in June, and so you're going to be seeing some reminders a little bit about that to finish well. We've had a season in which we've been able to um, actually go under budget so far on some of our expenses, which has been great. We've been trying to do that, (laughs) but but we've kind of matched that by going under on our giving a little bit too. In fact, that's under. So we're hoping that will at least catch up and we could end on a good note at the end of June. So as you think about other things you give to or your resources, um, would you just keep this church in prayer and in mind and we trust God that we can go into the next fiscal year strong. All right, let me pray with you guys. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your gifts and we thank you, Lord, for how many ways you have used the resources you've blessed us with here and through generosity of this congregation and many others that are watching now. Father, I thank you so much uh, for Zeus and Charlotte and their family. I thank you for Noah, their son, who graduated himself this weekend uh, with an associate of science and he too is going to Bilo, so bless him, Father, we pray. And God... um, Yeah, Lord, we thank you for answered prayers. Even in the midst of waiting, we're seeing people being impacted by the gospel. You had a plan that was probably a little different than these guys envisioned at one point. But Lord, great things are happening. And uh, the ship is getting ready, Father, and other things are taking place. Father, I pray for safety. I pray, Lord God, you'd be with uh, Charlotte and uh, Noah as they travel down next week. I pray you'd be with Zeus as he stays up here and cares for uh, an uncle, Lord, who may be in his last days. Father, I pray for his strength there and just for your covering overall. And Lord, we pray you'd see through these final steps with getting ready to launch this boat. Father, we just uh, pray you'd take away any hindrance that it would be fully used for your kingdom and thank you for all the things that have happened in the meantime. And Father, we now come before you as we continue our worship here, Father, asking that you would move through Mark as he's been led by your spirit uh, to speak, Lord, for as you would through your word. Help us to hear you, your words of comfort, your words of strength, and the hope that we have in you, Jesus. And we claim that here this morning. We ask all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. And while they're heading back, yeah, I want to encourage you to... Um, just greet one another. Say hi to somebody that's near you. If you haven't met someone before, great opportunity to just say hello. And uh, Pastor Mark's going to come up here and get ready uh, to give us a message. Well, thank you all for taking a minute to check in with each other here in worship. And for those of you who are online, I hope you had a chance to splash a little more coffee in your cup or whatever. But uh, we're we're glad to be together this morning here at SRPC. And again, glad to have you online with us as well. This is a Memorial Day weekend, and we want to just pause before I I, uh, share a message this morning and just acknowledge the significance of this weekend for so many of us who know and love people who have served and really given the ultimate sacrifice and service to our country in losing their lives. And tomorrow is the day that we remember and we honor those who have sacrificed at that level. I'm always reminded on Memorial Day of Jesus who said there's no greater love than anyone would have than to lay down his life for his friends. And when we think about those who've served our country and lost their lives, we think of people who've laid down their lives for those friends that they would never meet, who are generation upon generation upon generation away from them, and yet it was their sacrifice that preserved the the freedoms that we have, and so we are grateful for them. Let me just pray, and then we'll move into our message today. So Lord, we um, pause. 
and we give you thanks uh, for those who have served faithfully and well, for those who have given their lives in sacrifice for something bigger than themselves. And we are reminded of Jesus who did that for us as well. And so, Lord, we pray that, um, f especially for those of us who know people who have served and sacrificed their lives, that you would bring a measure of comfort and peace into our lives uh, because of uh, your presence in us and your promise of eternal life. Uh, Lord, we remember and we thank you for them. We thank you for our country and for the freedoms that we have. And we pray that you would um, lead us in the way that you want us to go as a nation and that we would turn uh, once again to you as our God, as the reason for our hope and our future. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen. Well, I want to just acknowledge, uh, as I said at the beginning, that uh, the message this week changed a little bit, and um, I decided to share with you about the invitation to weep. God has all kinds of invitations for us, and we see them throughout Scripture, uh, but there is an invitation to weep that God offers to us, and I thought especially in light of the events in Uvalde, uh, uh, Texas this past week, it would be good to just share some reflections. A and I don't want to preach. I, I want to share. I just want to talk to us. And I, I want to anchor us in God's word. We want to go to the scriptures. Because we believe that God's word is the most helpful thing for us to process things like this. And so as we turn to God's word, I want to just use as a touchstone from the very beginning, Psalm 142, verses 1 and 2. This is what the psalmist writes. I cry aloud to the Lord. I lift my voice to the Lord for mercy. I pour out before him my complaint. Before him, I tell my trouble. The psalmist helps us understand that, that you and I are invited by God to cry out to God. That we're invited by God to, to pour out our complaints, to, to share with God our troubles. And, and as I was trying to think through things that I would share with us this morning as a congregation, both here in person and, and online, it, it just struck me that there are things that are important right now to not do and there are things that are important to do. This is not the time to say and do some things, and this is the time to say and do some things. And we wanna talk about that, but I think the most important question, probably for all of us at the end of the day, is this. Does God really get it? Does God get it? Does God get what we're going through? Does God get what? is happening in our world and in our country and in our lives. Personally, does God get it? And I think that's a really important question to ask, and so we're gonna go there. But I wanna start by just sharing with you what this is not the time for. I don't think this is the time to talk theology. Now, I know our church, and I know that many of us are well equipped in the Bible. We, we know the Bible well. We've taken classes and studies and we've been in small groups and we faithfully read the Bible and we know a lot about God. But I, I just wanna caution us in this moment with this thought. The last thing I think we ought to do right now is try to answer the first question people have. The question like, why did this happen? Why did God do this? How could a good God allow this? Those are some of the first questions that people ask, and I really believe that's the last question right now that we should try to answer. This is not the time to talk theology, and here's why. Right now, I just need to be honest. There is no answer that is good enough for people. Now we know there are answers, and we know God's word has answers, but right now in this moment, with all of the emotion 
There is no answer that's good. There's no answer that's going to flip the switch in people's minds and hearts. Go, oh, I get it. This is not the time to talk theology. The Bible is most useful right now to give us language to cry out, not to figure out. Does that make sense? I mean, there, there are great things that the Bible offers us that help us figure things right out, right? But the greatest gift the Bible can give us right now is a language to cry out. And God's word does that. Psalm 142 is a great example of that. Now is not the time to talk theology. Now is not the time to avoid the pain. Uh, let me just talk about my personal experience. It's so tempting for me personally right now to um, feel relieved that my own life and relationships aren't affected. And it's so tempting to try to um, not think about it too much, to try not to dwell on it, to try not to kind of go there in my mind and feel all the things that I, it's just tempting to sort of try to stay away from those things once the initial shock is over. And I just want to say to myself and then share with you, this is not the time for that. This is not the time to avoid the pain. Because if you're a follower of Jesus, what you do is you take the heart of Jesus with you into the world. And that means that, that you take the heart of Jesus into a world that is broken and racked, like we've seen this past week. In Luke chapter four, Jesus comes to his hometown in Nazareth, and he goes to the synagogue, and he opens the scripture, and he reads what will become for Jesus his mission statement in life. Let me read that for you. He, he sits down, and he opens the, the scriptures to the book of Isaiah, and this is what he reads. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. He sent me to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. What Jesus is saying at the very beginning of his ministry is his mission is to be in it, <laughs> to be in those places with the poor and the prisoner and the blind and the oppressed. Jesus' mission, he's all about being in it, not living above it. And as a follower of Jesus, this is not the time for me to avoid the pain by either trying to numb myself or trying to just ignore this, if, if I'm a follower of Jesus, God's invitation to me is to be in it like Jesus was in it and is in it. I, I need to be in it because, you know what, that's where Jesus is right now. He's in it. He's brokenhearted. And he weeps with those who weep. Now is not the time to avoid the pain. It is time for some things, though. And let me just share a couple of thoughts around that. Now is the time to feel it. I, I, I'm, again, I'm speaking personally. I have to allow myself to feel, to have feelings. Part of what, what happens when God creates us in his image is we get bundled up in our humanity, we get feelings. And now is the time to feel. One thing I know I get wrong, and, and maybe you do too, one thing we often get wrong is the belief that because God is sort of above it all, because God superintends everything, because God is sovereign, we, we make the mistake of thinking because God is above it all, God doesn't feel it. And scripture actually refutes that again and again and again and again. You think about the Old Testament. One of my favorite Old Testament books is the book of Hosea. If you read through the book of Hosea, 14 chapters, it'll take you about 45 minutes. If you read through that book with a feeling lens on, you will see the wave, the roller coaster of God's feelings 
throughout the book of Hosea. Feelings of betrayal, feelings of heartache, feelings of anger, feelings of judgment, feelings of compassion, feelings of mercy. The, the book of Hosea is a roller coaster ride of God's feelings. Just because God is sovereign and above it all does not mean God does not feel. And part of our humanity is to feel it. It's time we need, this is the right time to feel. Think of Jesus. <laughs> Again, if you look at the scriptures, you see through the lens of feelings, you see Jesus with all kinds of feelings, but one of the most striking things is when Jesus comes to the grave of his friend Lazarus. Do you remember that in John chapter 11? Think about this, you guys. He's about to raise Lazarus from the dead. He knows the end of the story. He knows where this thing is going, and yet he weeps at the tomb. God feels, and we need to feel. So, what have you been feeling? It's important to identify and to name your feelings. Sadness, anger, hopelessness, frustration, compassion. When we identify our feelings, then the, the next thing to do is just to bring them to God in prayer. And again, Psalm 142, 142 is a great language for us to pray to God. Now is the time to feel. And I just want to say this. If, if you have a hard time sort of processing your feelings, we actually have people here at SRPC who are trained listeners. They're called Stephen Ministers. And my friend Bob Hayes back there is, is the link to our Stephen Ministers here at SRPC. And they're a team of people who, again, are super well-trained as listeners and who will help you process feelings around this or anything else. So we encourage you to take advantage of that as well. Now's the time to feel. Now is the time to listen. So many people want to talk right now. One of the biggest gifts you can give is listening. One of the best things that you can do right now is to be a listener. Now is the time to listen. And the Bible gives us so much wise counsel about listen, listening. So often, especially in situations like this, right, we feel inadequate as a listener because we feel like, well, I need to say something profound or at least I need to say something helpful. And we're in over our heads when stuff like Ubaldi and everything else goes, around, goes on around us. We feel over our heads. Listen to the words of Proverbs 17. It's almost a tongue in cheek, but it's so poignant. Even fools are thought wise if they keep silent and discerning if they hold their tongues. So let me translate for us today. You may not know what to say. You may not think you have anything to say that's profound or wise or helpful or anything. That doesn't matter. What matters is listening. Even fools are thought wise if they keep silent and discerning if they hold their tongues. Can I tell you something? Right now, people don't need another mouth to hear from. They need people who have ears to listen. Now is the time to listen. Let's finish today with, I think I started with what I think is the most important question of all. Does God really get it? I mean, all that's happened. Does God get what's going on? Does God get what we're going through here? Uvalde is just the, this week's tragedy, right? It's the latest heartache that you can add to the pile that goes back weeks and months, other shootings and wars and all the rest, and it keeps on coming. And so it's fair to ask the question, okay, does God really get it? Does God get it? And I think the only way to answer that question 
is to look at Jesus. Here's what the Bible says in Colossians chapter one about Jesus. It says, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything else was created and is supreme over all creation. What the Bible helps us understand very clearly in Colossians chapter one is Jesus is God in the flesh. When you look at Jesus, when you look at how Jesus engages and deals with life, you'll get the answer to the question, does God really get it? Because Jesus is God in the flesh. He is the visible image of the invisible God. So I just, as I've been thinking about Jesus this week, I, I wanna share with you what I see, what I see when I look at Jesus. When I look at Jesus, I see him spending most of his time with broken, hurting people. I see Jesus spending most of his time with people who need to know they're loved, with people who need compassion, with people who need healing, with people who need help, with people who need hope. That's where Jesus was. He was with people who were broken and hurting. Jesus was in it. He wasn't above it. I look at Jesus and I see him feel. I see him weep at the tomb of his friend Lazarus. I see him angry at the temple. I see incredible joy in Jesus when his disciples come back and they report to him all that they had done in his name. He's just Yes, celebrating. And I see Jesus' frustration with the disciples too, right? I look at Jesus and I see him feel. I look at Jesus and I see him in it, not above it. But most of all, most of all, when I look at Jesus, I see him suffer. I see a Jesus that's willing to, to go to the hardest and darkest places to save me for sure, but also to show me that he gets it. He goes there to show me, to show you that he gets it. We get glimpses of this, especially at the end of Jesus' life as he's facing the cross. And I wanna take you to Mark chapter 14 for just a moment because this is when Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. It's just hours before his arrest, his torture, and his execution. And he knows it's coming. So in Mark chapter 14, we read, Jesus took Peter, James, and John along with him. This is in the garden. And he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. This is more than a bad day. This is like deep, deep anguish and depression. And here's what he says to Peter, James, and John in this moment in the garden. He says, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. That's serious stuff. Right? Jesus is on the throne.
he knows. And maybe you're in church today. Maybe you're watching online today because you're wondering, does God get it? (laughs) And the answer is yeah, he does. And God's invitation to us today is to weep with him and then to come to him and cling to him for help and for hope. God promises this by simply asking him. He'll come into your life. He'll mend, begin to mend your brokenness. He'll forgive your sin. He'll give you hope. I I can't think of anything we need more right now than mending our brokenness and healing and grace, and hope. So I'm gonna try to put words to a prayer as we close today. And um, some of you right now may be feeling like this is the day I need to cross that line of faith. And I need to put my trust in a God who gets it. He doesn't live above it all. He's in it and he gets it. And I want to pray for you today. If that's your prayer, just kind of join me in the quiet of your heart. And let's talk to a God who gets it. Let's pray. God, life can be so hard and we wonder if you get it. Thank you for Jesus. Because when we look at him, we know that you do. Thank you for those words in the garden, Dad, I don't want to do it. Thank you for what he went through to save us and to show us what he can do in our lives. If you're at a place right now, today, where you wanna cross that line of faith and put your trust in a God who gets it, in a God who gets you. Again, in the quiet of your heart, would you just pray these words with me? God, thank you for getting it. God, thank you for getting me. Jesus, you came to mend the brokenhearted and you came to forgive sins and you came to give hope and that's what I need right now. So Jesus, I invite you into my heart by faith and ask that you would begin to mend my brokenness. Ask that you would forgive my sins and ask that you would give me hope. God, thank you that you know how to keep your promises and so I trust that you keep your promise to me and my life, a new life of healing and grace and hope begins right now with a God who gets it and gets me. In Jesus' name, amen. We're gonna close today with a song called Cornerstone. And the chorus of that song, I think, is so important. It's a a song that just points us to Jesus through and through. But the the closing, or the, the chorus of that song goes, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, 
through the storm. He is Lord. Would you stand and join us as we sing?
you, uh, worship team. Thank you, as always, today. It was just some great songs to help us. I, I don't know about you, but just the music um, is a way for us to process and walk through. Yeah. Hey, one practical thing I was thinking, too, for this week. I heard an interview with one of the pastors right there from that community. You know, one thing we can do, pray for those ministers who are there, those Christians who are there to listen, mm -hmm. um, but they're going to be interviewed, they are being interviewed, and just how do they reflect Christ when they're, talk about being right in the thick of it, and mm -hmm. that goes for any kind of disaster or, or, or uh, catastrophe like that, that we mm -hmm. can be positively praying into those situations. I, I don't know if it's, near you. stop moving. Let's do this. There you go. How's this sound? Better. All right. Um, hey, before we go today, just a couple of things. First of all, next Sunday uh, after the service, we're going to have a congregational meeting, and uh, that is to elect elders and deacons, which is a great thing, and we're looking forward to that, and also to hear an update on where we're at with our facility plans. So if you can stay for a little bit after the service, that would be great. Mm -hmm. And speaking of our deacons, this is the end of the month, so they do their once a month uh, collection, which is to a special fund to help meet needs in our community, and sometimes right here in our church family. So you'll see some folks with baskets if you'd like to contribute to that. And don't forget to say hello, give a high five to our graduates on the way yeah. out as well. Yeah. Spend some time with one another. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Hey, uh, before you go, just a reminder, if today was the day for you where you crossed that line of faith and said yes to Jesus, um, we would love, Pastor Mike, myself, I see Pastor Don over there too, would love to just affirm that and confirm that in you, so don't miss that opportunity just to connect with, uh, with one of the three of us after the service today. And those online, if you took that step of faith, just email us, it's just mark at srpc.org. I'd love to walk with you and help you take next steps as well. well. Let me go again to the scriptures for a final word of hope for us. And it's one of the shortest verses in one of the shortest books in the Bible. Ah, it's not a short verse, it's a short book though. It's from Jude. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling. Think about that. To keep you from falling and to make you stand in his presence blameless and with great joy. To the only God our Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority, now and forever. Amen? Amen. He's in it. God bless.